so I'm here and I'm going to try to make it quick, uh, short clock, um, get to my slides. So I'm an IT operations director. I don't know insurance. I know terminologies and I don't know data points, but um, as far as insurance goes, I'm the IT guy, right? Um, and I wasn't going to get up on this stage being with an insurance company without our own little safe harbor agreement, our own little disclaimer. So there's that, right? Uh, but I want to take a quick second here and introduce my team to you real quick. Um, they're the guys that put the effort behind this application. Thank God for the iPhone, right? So uh, that little, that little uh, movie right there is a lot about the character of my team. Um, they really strive to make the back end office a whole lot better every day. And they do it quick, right? That's what we get paid for. So what is Aspire? Aspire is a unique application that controls the workflow of records or policies that come into the system, right? So we get policies that come in, and it's a skills-based system, meaning the right person is going to get the right piece of work at the right time. And it's supposed to increase the efficiency of the business. Um, it is an end-to-end -end process. We not only process the work through a uh, specified workflow, uh, but we also, once it gets done by the processor, it then goes on to the quality side, goes through its own little workflow there. Um, and we even have some HR functionality that we'll show you here in a little bit. A timeline. This timeline can look a little deceiving. And the reason I say that is because in February of 2013, we had our first initial brown paper session. If anybody been in a brown paper session, they're painful. It's everybody wants their own little thing. Everybody wants what they want. Um, but as long as you can get your concept out, you can get to the right end point. So we had our initial concept in February. And not until July was the decision made to use Salesforce. Um, and then in August through like mid to late August through uh, mid-November, the application got developed. That's three months of development. What's special about that? What's special about that is I have six developers, and none of them knew the programming language. None of them. Zero knowledge. They didn't know Apex. They didn't know Visual Force. They had basic coding skills. Um, they were Microsoft Access developers, so those companies that are still using Access to do their business and you have developers that are doing that, that's what my guys are. Um, so I had six developers, st really steep learning curve. We had one month to learn the language. And we did a lot of self-taught. Went out and bought some Java books because Java is just very similar to Apex. So I uh, bought some Java books, did a lot of online tutorials, and geared my team up in a really short period of time. Um, so yeah, we were self-taught in a month. And it ended up being a fully customized application. When we first came out the gate, um, a little history here is um, the IT department came back to me and said, stay in the box. Stay in the Salesforce box. And when you tell a developer, stay in the box, the response is, what the heck's a box? <coughs> they don't know what a box is. Their, their whole job is to stay outside of that box. Um, so, but due to the complexity of the application, there was no way this could be built inside the box. We couldn't drag and drop the fields inside of Salesforce to make the UI work for our uh, processors, our employees. Um, at the end of the day, released ahead of schedule, and it was faster than any previous deployments. It became very easy for us. Um, current adoption rate, 450 users and growing by the day, internationally used in seven, in a, in seven months. It was actually, um, we do outsource some of our stuff. 
um, and the outsource vendor had their own application and they chose this application over their own because of what it can do, what it can provide, uh, the data points that it gets in return. Um, uh, Donna said earlier, we're, we're drowning in data. Well, I think I add to the water count there because you know, I'm producing so much data out just out of this application, but the data that I produce can transition into making the process better, and we'll show you that here in a minute. Um, Buy-in, continuous support. If you go down the road of utilizing Salesforce, the one thing I can tell you is get the buy-in from the business. Let them drive the application. They have great ideas. Now, not every great idea is gonna get to the table, but those great ideas will get you the buy-in. They will want to do more with you. Um, and finally, integration. So they also talked about earlier, you know, how we have so many different applications and there's five screens now and there's seven screens then and, and all this other stuff. So um, what the plan is for Aspire um, is to integrate with, an applica uh, integrate with enterprise application. So what we're going to do is right now we're, we're trying to trim the fat. We're trying to get rid of the multiple data sources and consolidate to one sort of source of truth. Um, when we do that though, we're gonna take that new enterprise application and we're going to embed it inside of Salesforce so that they have one stop shop. They will log into Aspire, they will log into this applic other application from within inside of Salesforce and now they're not having to go to multiple different uh, applications. They're going to one application to get wherever they need to go. Uh, so let's take a trip down the Aspire lane. Though this is Aspire, this is the tool. Um, admins are not me or my team. We trained individuals um, a lot of them supervisors, trained them to use the application and sort of manage the application within. Saves my guys a lot of time. I don't, have to, I don't have to do a whole lot other than tell them how to do it and they go do. So they can come in and they can go to this admin tab. On this screen, they can actually go in and select a specific user. They can give them skills. All the skills are listed below. Some of them may look familiar to you. Um, they can activate and deactivate somebody directly from within here. And when I say activate, when they activate somebody, it actually sends me a request that says, hey, Jane needs access. Um, I'll go out, I'll make sure that I have the correct license counts, everything's good to go, and I'll give them access. But when they go to deactivate them, it deactivates them on the spot. Why is that important? Data security. You got somebody that's terminated from the company, you don't want them to sort of go out and start fishing your information somewhere else. You come in here, you press a button, they're done. They can't get in anymore. Um, we actually have a complex algorithm that gets individuals work, right? Um, on the floor or in training, it dynamically changes the algorithm on the fly. So if you want somebody to only get work that's five days out ahead of schedule, so that way they're in training mode, you don't want them touching the most important stuff right now, you can push a button and it happens. You can also assign specific branches. So we can go even down to the branch level if you have individuals that only focus in certain areas, you can give them dedicated branches, and the algorithm does the work to get the person the correct piece of work. Um, also on the screen, we figured out quite early on, managing one individual at a time was a pain. <laughs> you had to go into each individual and you have multiple skills and it becomes very difficult. So what we did, we created a mass skill update screen where they can come in here and they can select the multiple users, give them all the skills at one point in time. So you can take 50 users, hit the button, they all turned on from the skill. Now that they have that skill turned on, that's the work they're gonna get. Also on the screen, item time standards. How long does it take a piece of work to get done? Today, this screen here is not dynamic. It's going to be in the near future where we take the data that Salesforce is producing for us because we capture every point in time that something happens to a record so we know how long it takes to do a piece of work end to end and dynamically change that fixed rate sort of standard, right? So this is used in determining how sometimes we give production sort of credit to an individual. So we can tell how productive our people are. Also on the screen, priority management. The algorithm works in a way that issues out work based on priority, by first in, first out, date and time sort of scenarios, by skills, uh, uh, just a plethora of sort of variables that determine what piece of work gets pushed out. Um, priority management allows the business to come in and set the priority. You can set the priority and you can tell it to, you only want new business uh, to go out first and you only want it to go out for this week. That's your priority. Um, 
you can actually set that up in the system and it will expire at the time that you tell it you want it to expire. And it also goes through an approval process where the supervisors will get notified that they have an approval of a, a priority change and it will navigate up the system to get approved. Once it's approved, it's, in, it's already implemented and it's good to go. So let's take a day in the life of a, of a processor. Um, here we'll, we'll look at Jane Doe. She's going to come in and everybody loves Jane, right? So she comes in and no longer does she have to wait on a supervisor to give her a piece of work. She no longer has to dig through any reports. She no longer has to go anywhere else but here. She comes in, she hits a button, and it gives her the next piece of work. And it's the most prioritized piece of work. It's what's expected of her right now. Um, on the right hand side, you can see an actions column. What's important to know here that in our system, the actions are related directly with the work status. And the work status is over here on the left. And in this case, it's paused. So the only thing that she has is a play button or a resume button. When she hits that button, she gets a new set of buttons. She can then pause it, pend it. If she's interrupted, we capture that. Um, and you can also see that we have a QC button. So that sends it into the quality process. Or, and finally, she can add a new record if she so chooses. So another thing that we have in here is the self-check process. So you want your people to do quality work. And some of you guys probably have checklists that they follow in order to make sure that they're doing the correct work, right? In the past, they would have to go out to another link, either get this document, fill it out, email it off, save it, do whatever, right? So there's about five or six steps in the process they would have to do just with this self-check. No longer. They come in here, the self-check's already embedded in the system. And mind you, all of this, all of this data is already on the, in the cloud. It's already on Salesforce. Click of a button. They can fill out the checklist, they can save it for later, or they can complete it, and it gets done. If she scrolls down the page, she can see something about the account. She can see account details. What's nice about this is she can see who it's all the work associated with this account is assigned to. So she knows if she's working on a piece of the puzzle, the other pieces of the puzzle might be with somebody else. She also has the ability to self-assign. So if she pressed the get work button and she didn't get the work to begin with, she has the ability to self-assign that work. However, if she tries to self-assign and she doesn't have the skill, the system will tell her. If you don't have the skill, talk to your supervisor. So she can go back and say, hey, I tried to get self-assigned. I wasn't skilled for this. I think I know how to do it. Either turn me on or make sure that I'm trained, right? So um, it controls that environment. Down a little bit further, my item detail, this section here is basically what's all up in the upper table layout. And it goes over and brings that stuff down into a more readable format, also with some more additional um, pieces of information. And finally, at the bottom, the status history, this is extremely important. This is where the, the Aspire gets its wheels. Um, it tracks every single step of the process that this piece of work went through. From the time that it came in to the time that it leaves, all the sort of activities are captured. And it tells me how long they were in those steps. Uh, another cool feature up here in the, uh, where the comments are is Comments sometimes take up real estate on screen and you don't like that. I mean, as a developer, you, you're, you only have so much space to work with. So we found a way where we could basically hover over the comments and they basically blow out so you can see everything that's in there. So I guess one key thing um, to think about while I'm going through this is, mind you, this is all, all this is built in three months. Or, it, yeah, just built in three months. It's, it's, it's taking what was thought impossible to be impossible. Um, in this screen, they actually can come in and they can see their, my pr their production. So Jane wants to know how she's doing. We've implemented a way for us to bring that data in and say, here is how you're doing month over month, quarter by quarter. Uh, supervisors can see how their team is, teams are doing. VPs can see how a department's doing. So that whole structure stays intact. We can get to the HR portion right now. Down here at the bottom, you have comment entry. So supervisors actually use this screen to go in, look at the production, and then make comments to the employee about their production. So they can come in, fill out their little comment, and then they can come back later and filter down by timeline, purpose, focus, um, what the next steps are. Um, did they share that with the employee? Because you can share it through the system. You can email it to them. Um, and all the comments are listed there. Finally, 
how do you communicate change to your people? On the Home tab, we use the feed. We put together our PowerPoint slides. Here's all the changes that are going on. Here's what's going to affect you. And we put that out in the feed, and we target our audience. If it's going to affect my processing community, I only send it to the processing community. If it's going to affect my quality staff, I only send it to my quality staff. So there's no confusion, right? So you, you try to limit the, the information flow to only what you want them to focus on. So my last comment is, is that I came to the company in CNA in October of 2012. This was my first drive. And I was thrown in basically to say, go do the impossible. And I would say that Salesforce made that possible. We were able to take that whole process and drive through it rather quickly. So if you think you can't do it, proof you can. Thanks. Thank you.